Unveiling contains content for mature audiences, including topics such as PTSD, physical and psychological trauma, and some suggestive situations of an adult nature. Please be mindful of your mental health and enjoy responsibly. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm finally getting the rest of this first chapter of Unveiling out the door, and it's one I've honestly had some trouble finally getting finished for various reasons, and not all of them are bad. But I'll dig into those details with you at the end. After a few technical hiccups, the Unveiling team has finally made the second build available on Patreon, with the public release to of course follow shortly thereafter, so I couldn't take too long getting this one out. Just like my last few videos, this one is also a bit of a collaboration but I've got a surprise guest voice actor for this one that I'll call out later on when it happens. You'll just have to wait and see. Last time, we literally left Arthur with the bag, having just received a sack of gold coins from the great Bodgan's advisor Ziliaris, as a payment and stipend to be the head chef for the Festival of Eden. But Arthur is just a humble cook and dishwasher at the local restaurant, and almost everyone in town seems to avoid him anyway. Were it not for Aldara and the twins, he might be completely alone in the wake of whatever mysterious disaster has caused all the town folk to shun him. The true nature of the incident remains as yet unknown as we wrap up the rest of Chapter 1 of Unveiling. And that's how another day ends. Just more unusual than the average days in this village. This really took me by surprise. Me, the cook, for the festival. But why now? It's been years since... You owe him your life. Don't forget that, dishwasher. The words of Ziliaris haunt my mind the whole time I was putting away tables and chairs. It's been years since he... in that place. But why was he there that day, at that place? What was I doing there? My... Where... Where was I that day? My head started to hurt. I was alone? Of course. I've always been alone. Right? Without thinking, I threw a large amount of water on my face. I turned off the water faucet and kept leaning on the sink as I took a deep breath. There's no need... To... Think about the past, Arthur. You're fine now. I dried my fur with the closest rag I had. Uh -huh. I noticed that something smelled like smoke nearby. Oh, right. The firewood. Forgot to put it out. I sighed tiredly. I took a glass and filled it with water. Normally, the wood is left to consume itself with the fire. But I really dislike the smell of burning wood. I removed the pots and other utensils, putting them in the sink. Slowly and from a distance, I poured the water to put out the fire. The sound was somewhat soothing, but I couldn't say the same about the smell. That day. The smell. What was that hideous smell? The loud sound and the small pieces of hot wood flying gave me a terrible fright. I had dumped the water abruptly because I was distracted. My reflexes helped me jump back from the fire quickly. Shit! I put a paw on my chest in relief. Just when I thought the danger had passed, I felt a burning sensation in the paw on my chest. A piece of wood had burned a small part of the fur on my paw. No! No, 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 no! I yelled in desperation as I ran to my bathroom. I slammed the door open and grabbed the soap as fast as I could, then rubbed it on the part where I burned my fur. No, no, no! Please, please! It was too late. The smell had already entered my nose. My eyes began to fill with tears, and my breathing accelerated terribly. I felt my body lose strength. I tried to go to my bed, but I couldn't see where I was. Everything was so dark. My eyes were full of tears, 
Then my heart was pounding terribly. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't keep my balance. I protected my face with my paws so as not to hit it when I fell to the floor. No. Not again. Please. Please. I felt like choking. And a sharp pain in my chest made me grab it tightly. The world, already dark, became distorted with red and black colors around me. My shadow began to consume me like a black substance. Arthur, calm down. Nothing is real. The viscosity was so palpable that it didn't feel like something imaginary. That thing rose from the ground and started to consume me. It swallowed my tail, legs, back, and finally part of my face. The floor was engulfed in flames that slowly climbed up to my legs. The ground seemed like a dark void, from which hands of the same liquid tried to reach at me and drag me down with them. I could see deformed faces crying in agony. Those hideous creatures, why did they look so familiar? Help us, Arthur! It burns! Please, it hurts so much. Save us. I can't stand it. Those awful and suffering things cried out my name with such agony. You're not real, Bjorn. Leave me alone. I tried to rip that horrible thing out of my body. I ripped and scratched my entire being to untie the knots that had taken hold of me. I managed to free my mouth and face from that disgusting substance, but I still couldn't get up from the dark and sticky floor. What the fuck is this? Why does it keep haunting me? Desperately, I turned my body to face the ceiling so I couldn't see the horrors that the floor reflected. It was all so unreal. So stupidly unreal. I took a deep breath, closing my eyes tightly, but I quickly opened them to make sure nothing would come after me. Now the roof had disappeared. The sound of a huge fire made me doubt if this was really just a trick of my mind. I could see how some trees which covered the false sky, burn, and in their ashes, the black creatures appeared again. There was no escape. Why did you Why let did us you die? Let us die? <gasps> Coward! Shut up! Get away from me! Fuck off! I shouted at those voices with too much difficulty, because a knot in my throat had made me almost speechless. Slowly, my sight was covered by the black creatures. They managed to grab my arms and raised my torso little by little. Arthur. 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 They moaned my name with so much pain. I'm scared. Please. Anyone. Help me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tears streamed down my face as I begged to wake up from this nightmare. Arthur! 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 The voices gradually took on a feminine and vaguely familiar tone. I still couldn't see anything. I just felt that my body was moved with desperation. Arthur! It's me! It's Aldara. Aldara? She's my best friend, of course. She sounds very sad and worried. Aldara, help me. Uh, Aldar. The knot in my throat wouldn't let me say what I wanted. I felt arms wrap around my back and pull me into a warm embrace. I'm here, buddy. I'm here. She rubbed her face with mine to calm me down. I'm, I'm sorry. I awkwardly tried to keep talking, 
Just breathe. Keep breathing. She silenced me so that I would stop wasting the almost non-existent air in my lungs. I managed to take a deep breath and began to exhale it slowly. That's right, just like that. I felt her paws caress the fur on my shoulders and arms. Little by little, my heart rate stabilized, my sight returned, my senses sharpened, and the dark world filled with colors again. The black thing that covered my body was gone. The misshapen hands and faces slowly disappeared. You're safe. I won't let anyone hurt you, Aldara said with a soft voice. I continued to take deep breaths until my respiration was normal. I felt a huge relief to see Aldara in front of me. I appreciate that she got me out of that nightmare. Again. <laughs> I'm glad I'm still able to deal with your panic attacks. Panic attacks? I don't think those things are just panic. Yet, she doesn't know what I really see. I've never told her about the things that haunt me. I don't know if something really haunts me, if it's a product of my imagination, or if it's the cur- Never mind. I never wanted to tell her. I don't want her to be scared or think I'm going crazy. How do you feel? She looked at me relieved. I... I'm fine. I tried to smile softly so she wouldn't worry anymore. I'm glad, Elfie. She used the stupid nickname to get rid of the tension. I chuckled softly, still without much strength and with my stomach upset. Here, I'll help you get up. Aldara placed one of my arms around her neck and, with one paw on my waist and the other on my shoulder, lifted me off the ground. Carefully, she let go of my body to see if I could stand upright. With some wobbling, I was able to regain my posture and stand normally. Well done. Aldara kept praising every positive thing I did. It's kind of silly, but cute. She's just trying to make me feel good. That's something I really appreciate about her. <sighs> Thanks, Aldara. I breathed deeply in a sign of relief. <laughs> You're welcome, Elfie. She smiled at me. I really felt like I was going to die. Seriously, I'm very grateful to her. Come, I think you need to sit down for a minute. She guided me to the edge of my bed very carefully. How do you feel... The door to my room was flung open, interrupting Aldara's words. <coughs> Excuse our disrespect, boss. We thought you may have had some problems. <coughs> All in order? Two guards entered the door with difficulty, as their bodies were somewhat large for the frame, one being a lion with an abundant mane, and the other a tiger with fangs that highlighted his snout. Oh, my God. They both wore their armor and metal shoulder pads, distinctive of the guards. The lion had exposed his chest, abdomen, and what huge pecs he had. On the other hand, the tiger was more covered, but I couldn't help but see his thick legs and how tight his armor was on his buttocks. Suddenly, my nose began to pick up on each of their scents. Oh, fuck. They both smelled so manly. Their sweat... The type of shampoo they used and their colognes? The smell was so intense in my nose. Don't worry, guys. My friend just wasn't feeling very well. But everything is fine now. Uh... Aldara looked at me and noticed something very peculiar. Oh. But on second thought, could you help me check if my friend is in good condition? You know, a little first aid practice. She smiled at me and raised both eyebrows with malice. What the fuck is she thinking? Doesn't she remember that I just had a panic attack? It's not necessary. I'm... Yes, yes ma'am. Ma the guards put their weapons aside and approached me. Danger, danger, danger! I could almost feel my face burn and hear my heart cry out for help. Once they were just a few inches away from me, I noticed how massive both of them were. They were huge. Furthermore, I was sitting in the bed and could observe their entire size from below. However, this did not last long, because they both crouched down to be at the same height as me. 
Could you give me your paw, young? The lion was waiting for an answer, but the words couldn't come out of my mouth. Uh, Arthur. His name's Arthur. Excuse him. He's a little bit scared. Aldar commented with some concern. Feigned, of course. <laughs> Don't worry, young Arthur. We'll be very careful checking you to see if everything is okay. The lion smiled politely at me. His voice was so deep and comforting. <laughs> yes, just tell us if something hurts. The tiger, with a similar voice, continued to inspect my body. After a moment, I snapped out of my stupid trance and raised my paw. The lion took it and placed it on his to take my pulse. His paw was huge. Not to mention his arms were almost as thick as my head. The smell of the cologne in his mane was so strong to me. My paws began to sweat, and my heart raced terribly. His pulse is a little fast, and his paws are somewhat cold. Damn it, Arthur. Don't be so obvious. Thank Bodkin, you are a feline too. It's easier for us to check you. Said the tiger with relief, before placing his big paw on my forehead. I can't believe I have two huge, beefy guys checking my body so delicately. I looked over to Aldara. She had a big, mischievous grin on her face. That panther is having so much fun with this situation. It feels kind of hot, said the tiger to the lion. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Despite my inner panic, the lion's touch made me feel a burning sensation in my uh. paw. Ouch! I groaned and, reflexively in pain, moved my paw away. The lion noticed that a part of my fur was burned. It was from the piece of firewood that triggered that torment just now. I found a burn. The lion notified the tiger. I think I have some bandages over here. The tiger began to search in the small bag hanging from his hip. But we don't have any ointment to ease the pain. I think a little bit of saliva might help. Aldara commented, still with that stupid evil smile. The lion nodded to Aldara, and then proceeded to lick my paw. <gasps> I felt the big raspy tongue of the lion moisten the wound. <laughs> the tingling ran through my entire body up to my tail, leaving me petrified. I could feel my... <clears throat> oh boy. No, 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 no. Not now. I crossed my legs a little as the lion was taking the bandage that the tiger had found in his things. The lion began to bandage my paw. Just from his touch alone, I could feel my entire face burning. Unfortunately, my body didn't stop there. <coughs> I began to purr involuntarily, but quickly pretended to cough audibly to cover my body's wishes. Mm -hmm. It seems you may have a little cold as well, young Arthur said the lion, finishing bandaging my paw. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> I think. <laughs> I answered, trying to hide my purse. <laughs> Aldara tried to suppress her laughter, knowing exactly what was happening at that moment. I think that's it. The lion smiled at me again. <laughs> Thanks. I looked at them without really looking at them, concentrating all of my energy on lowering that discomfort in my crotch. At your service. <laughs> As guards, it's our job to make sure you're safe and sound. They both lowered their heads as a sign of respect. Good job, guys. This is what I train you for. Thank you, ma'am. They both looked very proud and somewhat embarrassed by Aldara's praise. How much power does that panther have over them? Anyway, I'm glad that they're finally away from me. I couldn't take any more attention from... Oh, guys, would you mind helping him up? He was feeling a little bit dizzy. What? I swear, I'm committing murder after this. Yes, ma'am. The two massive guys were about to come over to help me up, not until I yelped in a rush. <laughs> no! The two guards looked at me, a little bit surprised. Crap, I think that was too loud. I mean, 
there's no need, you guys, really. I feel better already. I quickly got up from my bed. Obviously, having solved my underwear problem first. I won't be the clown anymore, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, really. Oh, and for the bandage, too. I smiled nervously at the two guys. Suddenly, I felt an arm around my neck. <laughs> hey, and what about my thanks? I taught them everything they know. She shook me playfully with her arm around me. Thanks? You almost exposed that I'm gay, besides making me look like a fool in front of two guards. Sure, <laughs> you did well too. I mumbled with a not friendly at all smile. I know, Elfie. I'm the best, and you love me for it. That stupid nickname again. Surprisingly, both guards sighed tiredly. I see that you also were not spared by the boss, and her not at all creative nicknames. The lion sighed wearily again. <laughs> what are you talking about? I love yours, milky tits. The tiger laughed and pinched a nipple of the lion. The lion blushed slightly and crossed his arms, hiding his massive t his chest. <laughs> oh yeah, I prefer yours, lewd ass. The lion delivered a very audible spank to the tiger. They both hit their foreheads together angrily, but without letting go of their friendly smiles. <laughs> you wanna die, milky tits? I saw a slight tick in milk in the lion's smile. <laughs> oh, I was thinking how happy I'll be when I bury your body, lewd ass. The hostile aura grew between the two of them. On second thought, Elfie doesn't sound too bad. I sighed in disappointment and looked disapprovingly at Aldara. Don't look at me like that. I didn't reveal their nicknames. They spilled the beans themselves. Besides, I only use the nicknames when we're training to tease them. Aldara didn't really feel any remorse for ridiculing her guards. I began to hear the distinctive warning growls of angry felines coming from the guards. They looked like they would start fighting at any moment. Hey guys, no dumb fucking fights over here. Both guards huffed and looked away from each other like prideful little kittens. <laughs> Don't you think they look hot when they fight? <sighs> yes. I answered without thinking. <laughs> uh, I mean, instant regret. Oh, did you hear that, guys? Arthur thinks you're hot. <clears throat> <laughs> that it's really hot in here. Don't you want to get some fresh air outside? I interrupted Aldara, covering her mouth fast. Both guys nodded. Still with the silly fight between them, they left my house. I removed my paw from Aldara's mouth, and she followed the guards, but not without giving me first a teasing grin. <laughs> You're welcome. She winked at me. I hate her. But my love for her is strong enough to put up with her jokes. I rolled my eyes and followed her. The fresh air from the night is so relaxing, enough to make me forget about Aldara's stupid jokes. Thanks for escorting me, guys. I can handle it from here. The big felines lowered their heads to show their respect for her. Good luck with the night shift, and take care. I would hate if something happened to my best soldiers, Aldara said with that motherly tone of hers. It's funny that they're twice her size, and she still acts like their mother. Yes, yes ma'am. They shout out firmly. Before they left, the lion approached and extended his paw to me. This took me by surprise, but I returned the paw shake. <laughs> it was a pleasure finally meeting you, young Arthur, and sorry for all the fuss that we caused in your house. He smiled, a little ashamed. <laughs> oh, no problem. Sorry for the inconvenience, the bandage and all that. I laughed nervously. Aldara approached, putting her snout to my ear. <laughs> His eyes are up there, Arthur. She whispered playfully. I blushed and tried really hard not to kill her then and there. The lion finished the paw shake and moved away from me. <laughs> Don't worry, Arthur. We know how dear you are to the boss. Aldara's face turned red, and her tail started moving side to side nervously. 
<laughs> yeah, she is always talking about you. Arthur this and Arthur that. She never shuts up about you. Mm. Enough! Get lost, you two! Aldara pushed the felines away from me. Damn. She's really strong if she can push them like that. The guards laughed. They really took their payback on her. Even I had mine. However, they said something very sweet. Aldara came back to me, and I noticed the big guy's leaving. Uh. Tomorrow, I'll kill those idiots. I interrupted Aldara with a big warm hug. I really appreciate having someone looking out for me, even if everyone else sees me as a freak. As long as I have her, everything will be okay. <laughs> Didn't you want to kill me just now? She teased me, but I paid no mind. Arthur? I looked at her, resting my head on her chest. She was pointing at the two guards in the distance. Look at the tiger. Don't you want to know why I gave him that nickname? I looked at the tiger's wide back and checked him up and down. He really had a big hard butt and thick strong legs. The lion looked very similar, but his pecs and back stood out from the rest of his body. <laughs> nice. Hm. You ruined the moment. I said, kind of annoyed, ending the hug. Aww. Why did you stop? I really like your hugs. She put on a playfully sad voice in an attempt to make me feel guilty. That's what you get for all your silly little jokes. I grumbled. Oh, what silly little jokes? Don't play innocent. I know you always bring the biggest and hottest guards on purpose with you. Just to make fun of my reactions. I exclaimed with what little dignity I had left. Oh, Aww. wow. That's really how you thank me for bringing you hunky, sexy guys to take care of you and serve you? That's so mean. She was still playing the victim, but I wasn't buying any of that. Well, I'm not bringing any more guys then. Don't! Crap, my subconscious played me. Aldara raised her eyebrow with that smug grin on her face. I mean, I don't care. Do whatever you want. I looked away, really ashamed. Come on, Arthur. You don't have to keep pretending. I fully accept your love for guys and dicks. The last word made me blush from top to bottom. <laughs> Shh! Shut up! You don't have to be so explicit. I get it. There weren't any animals close to us, but I was still worried that someone could hear us. <laughs> Give me back my precious cuddles, or I'm gonna yell your love for cocks out loud. She extended her arms and gave me a threatening look. That's too low, even for you. I know you wouldn't dare. No, oh, you think I'm not saying that you love big cu- I immediately cut her off with a hug. Yay! Aldara tightened the hug and started to purr. <laughs> How old are we again? I sighed in defeat while the panther enjoyed having gotten her way. So, Arthur, tell me, which one did you like the most? She asked while petting my head. Still with that? Just drop the subject already. I complained, still ashamed about this situation. Just tell me. I really want to know. Uh. A lion, I guess. He seemed so loving and gentle. I wouldn't mind sleeping on those huge pecs and sinking into them. Aldara ended the hug abruptly. Oh, my bodkin! You like the daddy complex? Big in that he treats you like his son? Arthur, how kinky you are! She obviously was faking surprise, just to make me look like a pervert cat. And the worst thing is that she said all that out loud for anyone to hear. I'm gonna kill you right now, you crazy panther! I was so furious and embarrassed that even the fur on my back stood on end. <laughs> You'll have to catch me first, pervert Elfie. She ran away with a malevolent laugh. Ah! I'm not playing your games. Come here! I ran too, following her. After all the outrage and the angry things I'd yelled at her, I was laying a few inches from her, panting heavily. <laughs> really? gonna kill you. 
I took several deep breaths, trying to wipe away the sweat on my forehead. I leaned against a nearby rock, still trying to recover. Aldara shook her head in disappointment. Uh... We really need to work on that weak body of yours. We only ran for a couple of minutes. Unlike me, she seemed cool and without a single drop of sweat. Aren't you worried about not being able to keep up in bed? I don't know if you can handle the type of guys you like, she said with feigned concern. <laughs> I'm too tired <laughs> to argue with you. I kept my anger to myself so I could concentrate on breathing. After a few minutes, I noticed how Aldara watched every corner of the graveyard. As a matter of fact, I didn't notice we were already here. Being so focused on catching Aldara disoriented me. <sighs> it seems like no one's here. She sighed, relieved. The graveyard looked creepy as always. Even the flowers and trees growing around it don't really help to make it look better. And why does it always look so... familiar to me? The lamps weren't very helpful either. You could barely see where you were walking. I mean, it's good enough for us. We felines can see considerably well in the dark. But it wouldn't kill anyone to put more lights around here. Aldara extended her paw to me, pulling me out of my thoughts. Here, let me help you up. <sighs> I took one last deep breath of air and grabbed her paw. <laughs> Better? Well, aside from how much you've been bullying me so far... Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> she laughed. Thanks for coming with me. I really appreciate it. She suddenly changed her attitude. It's nothing. Elfie always takes care of his friends. I embraced the stupid nickname for once. Aldara smiled at me and started to walk into the graveyard. I followed her closely. Seeing so many tombstones with different names makes me wonder how many animals have cried in front of them. It's really sad to think about, but I can confirm that the tombstones had been visited recently, just by the smells coming from them. In moments like this, sometimes I wish I didn't have such a good nose. Suddenly, I feel like I'm not supposed to be here. It's really strange. We're here. Aldara catches my attention as she sits in front of a tombstone. It's her mother's. Good evening, Mom. I sit on the grass close to her and watch as she puts a dandelion on the tombstone. I hadn't noticed when she'd gotten one. She probably had it in her paw this whole time. Look, your favorites. Aldara smiled. The tombstone had some words on it. Here lies her Linda, mother and wife. Gave her life for her family. May she rest in peace. The phrase was as heroic as it was sad. Surprise! This time I brought Arthur with me. She grabbed me by the shoulders, just like a kid introducing a friend to her parents. Hello, Linda. I smiled nervously. <laughs> I'm glad you remember how she liked to be called. She grinned at me and then looked at the tombstone again. How's it going, Mom? I'm really doing well. Your daughter trains every day to become stronger. I even almost won a sword fight with Dad. She looked so happy. <sighs> But, you know, I'm still trying to win his trust back. Aldara sighed with sadness. But don't worry, I'm not giving up. We're making progress since you left us, and I'll keep fighting for that. I know a thing or two about Aldara's dad being mad at her, but I don't really know what happened. She said it was just some minor disagreements, although I don't believe it that much. The good thing is that me and Dad are doing a pretty good job protecting the town. Every day, I train the best guards that any place could have. Yeah, I know a couple of them. She trained them really well. They look so strong and capable and hot. N no, no, no horny thoughts. Have more respect, you dumb cat. Everyone in this town respects me. They tell me how safe they feel when I'm around. I bet you'd be so proud to know how many lives I've saved. I noticed how Aldaro's mood was starting to falter. Hey, I'm very proud of you, I said, so that she would hold on to that positive feeling. Aldara looked at me a little surprised for a second, just before laying her head on my shoulder. <laughs> I've been wondering these eleven years when you'd be romantic with me, darling. She mocked me. Oh, shut it. 
I blushed. You don't have to worry, Mom. Me and Arthur have each other's backs. Aw, that's so sweet. She can be annoying at times, but she is the sweetest animal I know. Oh. But you wouldn't believe his intentions on my guards. I've never seen him so thirsty for my boys. Forget it. Forget every nice thing I've said about her. <laughs> You're a liar. Do not listen to her, Linda. You know I'm not like that. I tried to explain to the tombstone while making an attempt to shut Aldara's mouth. He asked my guard if he could bury his face in his chest. That's not true! I yelled in embarrassment. And so my sexual orientation kept being the main topic. Moments later, when some of the bickering and jokes were over, Aldara and I were serious adults again. She closed her eyes and looked at her mother's grave. I did the same, knowing what was coming next. May, may your soul, soul find, find a better, better life, life, and may, may we, we be, be there, there together. together, we said at the same time. We opened our eyes and looked at each other with a smile. Do you think that's true? She asked, looking at the tombstone with her smile disappearing slowly. Uh -huh. What do you mean? You know, the meaning behind that phrase. I still didn't understand what she was talking about. Do you think that we really reincarnate? That maybe my mom already has a new family or another life? Aldara seemed lost in thought, so much so that she just laid her head on me and didn't say anything else after that. The questions made me feel weird, but I thought I could work with that and lighten the mood. Well, it's nice to think that our lives truly never end. That we just change and start all over again. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny? Aldara raised her head and looked at me curiously. Wouldn't what be funny? Could you imagine? I might have been something like a warrior in the past. And now I'm just a cook who has never held a sword in his life. Oh. Wow. That's really sad and pathetic if you ask me. Uh. You're really helping with my self-esteem, you know? I said sarcastically. <laughs> she just laughed. You know it's a joke. To me, you're perfect just the way you are. I suddenly get flustered by your words. <laughs> Thanks. I grinned with the little blush on my face. Yeah, with that perfect round ass of yours. Stop ruining the mood. She stuck out her tongue playfully. We both got up from the grass and brushed the dirt off our butts. And speaking of dirt, we cleaned the grave before leaving, removing the trash around it. I think it's time to go. Suddenly, her smile disappeared and her ears lowered. She looked so worried and nervous. Uh -huh. Are you okay? I asked, getting closer to her. Arthur, do you trust me? She sounded unusually insecure. Her sudden mood change was giving me the creeps. Uh, of course I trust you. I replied with concern in my chest. Aldara held her paw out to me. Take my paw. The mood suddenly felt so tense between us. I clasped paws with her and let her guide me past the graveyard's fence. Is this another joke of yours? I asked, wishing that this was just Aldara doing the worst jokes as always. But she didn't answer me. She just kept dragging me with her in silence. We climbed a small hill high enough to see the entire cemetery from there. My heart beat faster with every step closer to the top. I was getting anxious, like my body wanted to scream and run away. Suddenly, the sky began to get cloudy, and I felt the cold winds blowing all over my fur. Shit! This will be quick, I promise. I finally said something, and it started to rain. Aldara hastened her steps without explaining anything to me about what was happening. Finally on top of the hill, I noticed two graves close to a big tree. That's weird. I thought the graveyard ended after the fences. When we arrived, Aldara placed me under the tree to protect me from the rain. Arthur, I'm doing this for your own good. For our own good. Aldara put her paws on my shoulders, looking at me with concern. Aldara, what's going on? You're scaring me. I warned Jaden and Matthew to never mention the things that happened when the Great Bodkin saved you from the fire. Aldara seemed doubtful about continuing. That day... 
Podkin found you gagged, bandaged, and tied up with thick rope. Those fucking bastards kidnapped you and took you from that place. She raised her voice with anger. I'm glad Bodgan felt that something was going to happen in that place and quickly went to help you. When he had your unconscious body in his arms, I saw how the... <laughs> Aldara seemed to be struggling to remember something. I saw that place was on fire. I was so relieved that you were okay that I forget who you were at the time. But that day, I was alone. That day, there was no one with me. I was just... I was... Aldara desperately looks me in the eyes and shakes my body. Arthur, I need to know who exactly did that to you. She took me away from the tree. The rain transformed into a storm, and the water fully soaked our furs. I need to know who killed... And... Your parents, Arthur? Uh, who? A weird distortion in my ears didn't let me hear Aldara that well. Them. She sighed defeated and turned my body towards the two graves close to us. My breath fell short and my head started to hurt terribly. I don't get it. There's nothing there. What is she talking about? Aldara. There's nothing here. Aldara looked at me, scared. What? What? What happened? I can't... Uh, I can't hear anything. I can't see anything. My head hurts. Arthur. I heard my name with a sad tone. Oh, no. Are those things... again? Help me, please. No, that voice. It's different. It's so comforting. Why? My heart feels... so happy. So... Relieved. You're the only one who can do it. Help me save them. Save them? Save who? Come with me, my sweet Arthur. 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 Arthur! Arthur! Wake up! Slowly, I recovered consciousness, feeling Aldara fiercely shaking my body. I woke up with a fright as my eyes snapped open. <laughs> uh, what happened? Aldara lunged at me to give me a hug. <sighs> Thank Bodgen, you're okay. She sighed relieved. Arthur. That voice again. It wasn't a dream. Lightning must have hit close enough to stun us. We have to go and... Uh. Aldara, I heard someone asking for help. I interrupted her while getting up desperately. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? I didn't hear anybody. Without paying attention to Aldara's yelling, I kept looking for the voice asking for my help. Arthur, there's no one here. The storm is getting worse. We have to go now. I'm here. Please... Help me. There it is again. Don't you hear it? She looked at me very confused and angry already. Took me by the arms to grab my attention. Uh. Are you insane? We've got to get the hell out of here before fucking lightning hits us. She began to drag me downhill. Don't leave me here. Please. I stopped myself and looked at her with anger. Uh. Would you fucking wait for a moment? My sudden outburst scared her. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry, Aldara. Just trust me, okay? She sighed and stopped dragging me. Fine. I closed my eyes and prepared myself. Hope this works. Okay, Arthur. You can do this. Just focus. Take a deep breath and use your gift. 
I inhaled deeply, filling up my lungs slow and steady. Well, there's grass. Rain. Leaves. Rotten apple. No, no. Concentrate, Arthur. For a second time, I took a deep breath. Grass. Dirt. White bushes. Dirt. Burnt. Grass? Smoke. I think that's where the lightning struck. I repeated the breathing technique one more time. Arthur, what are you doing? Shh. Burned grass. Burned leaves. Dirty clothes. Fur with blood. Wait. Blood? If that's who I'm looking for, then he's hurt. I found him. I ran as fast as I could to the source of the bloody fur smell. I didn't really know exactly where he was because of the heavy rain, but the smell trace was guiding me there. I went downhill from the other side where Aldara and I climbed up. Arthur, wait! I heard Aldara following me and calling my name, but I didn't stop. I had this urgent, unexplainable desire to find who was asking for my help. I moved some bushes and discovered the rotten apple I smelled a moment ago. I'm close. I hurried my steps until I saw a big burnt tree. The flames had already been doused by the storm. Then I looked at the base of the trunk and there he was. A horse? Slowly I approached him. The horse looked huge from close up. Probably even bigger and brawnier than Aldara's guards. He was partially covered by a blanket. Maybe someone wanted to hide his entire body. Arthur. I heard babbling coming from the equine. Carefully, I got closer and stood next to him. Arthur. He's... He's saying my name. Hey, are you okay? touched his arm to see if I would get an answer, but he didn't reply. <gasps> I was shocked when I saw a big blood stain on his chest, coming down his body and mixing with the rain, making a small reddish puddle below him. Arthur. The horse kept saying my name, but my concern about his injury was more important. He is very badly injured. Suddenly, I heard the bushes moving. I told you to wait for me, Elfie. Aldara stopped her words when she saw me close to the wounded horse. <gasps> what happened here? She yelled, then she rushed, getting closer to me in the steed. I told you somebody was asking for help. I scolded her. Aldara stood on the other side of the horse and placed two fingers on his neck. He has a pulse, but it's weak. She sounded really serious. What do we do? He's still breathing, but his chest is covered in blood. Aldara seemed to be doubtful about actually doing something with the horse. I don't know, and I don't think it's safe to be here. The ones who hurt him might still be close, and I don't want you to be in danger. She gave me a stern look. We can't just leave him to die! I exclaimed, angry about her nonsense. Without thinking about it, I grabbed one of the horse's big arms and put it around my neck. What the hell are you doing? I tried to lift him up, but he was too heavy. Are you listening to me? Huh? Yeah, I'm listening, but this horse is dying, and I don't want to waste more time arguing with you. Arthur, you don't know him. Huh? I don't care. Weren't you supposed to help and protect animals? Thinking that this horse could die made me feel surprisingly sad and furious. Why did I care so much about him? Yeah, but, but nothing. This animal needs our help. So do your goddamn job and help me carry him. Aldara sighed, annoyed, and put the horse's other arm on her neck. On the count of three. One, two, three. We both lifted up the big horse, but it was difficult because of his weight. He was very tall, too, so much so that his legs and part of his pelvis were dragging on the ground while we carried him. Now what, genius? She yelled at me, but I couldn't see her face because the horse's head was between us. Let's get him to my house. 
I shouted over the noise of the storm. Ugh. Don't you want to give him a kiss and call him daddy too? She must have been really mad. I couldn't tell if that was a joke or a serious statement. And why am I blushing? This is not the moment for your horny stupid thoughts, Arthur. Just shut up and walk. You're really out of your mind, Arthur. The two of us started walking towards the town. Fortunately, Aldara was strong enough to bear the weight that I couldn't. God, she's really strong. Arthur, you found me. The horse whispered at me. Then he began to move his head towards me. He started making up and down movements to rub his head against mine. Is he nuzzling me? And of course, my body started to react to his actions. This isn't the time to purr, stupid body. Thank the gods, Aldara was so focused on carrying the horse that she hadn't noticed the affection he seemed to be giving me. The horse didn't stop rubbing his face against mine all the way through the graveyard. At least, this way I can tell he's still alive. I'm not going to let you die. After a really exhausting trip from the hill and graveyard, we were finally only a few feet away from my home. But I was worried because the horse had stopped rubbing against me. Maybe he passed out. Once we had made it to the entrance of my house, I could barely push open the door. Let's lay him on my bed. Aldara nodded, or at least seemed to, and helped me put the horse down. My bed spring squeaked, suddenly carrying all the horse's weight. My bed was barely big enough to fit the horse, with parts of him hanging off of it. We were really exhausted having carried him all the way here, but we couldn't rest. We needed to make sure he was still alive. Bring me some alcohol, bandages, cotton, and thread to sew she said while carefully checking the horse's injuries. Before doing anything, I lit all the candlesticks to illuminate my room. Then I quickly located everything Aldara asked for and handed it to her. Good, I'll try to disinfect the wound. She poured a lot of the alcohol onto the cotton gauze and started to clean the blood from the horse's chest. While she was cleaning, I noticed how big the gaping wound was, which made me nervous and got my heart pounding. But our jaws dropped when she cleaned all the blood from his chest and fur. Is that... a scar? The wound had already fully healed, but... How? That cannot be. There was so much fresh blood. We couldn't believe any of this. Maybe... the blood was from someone else? She didn't seem to think so. She checked the horse's pulse again. He's stable. I felt strangely relieved. That's good news. Right? He's no longer in danger. <sighs> Aldara sighed and stood up. She collected all of the bloody cotton and threw it away. We stayed in silence for a couple of minutes while the horse was calmly breathing and resting on my bed. <laughs> Thank you, Aldi. I broke the awkward silence. Arthur, I'm actually worried. She looked at him with a serious face. Ugh. We don't know who this guy is. We don't know who hurt him. And weirdest of all, we don't know how he survived that mortal injury. I don't want to know what kind of danger we're facing with this horse. Visibly stressed out, Aldara placed a paw on her face and massaged her forehead. But we do know that we saved him. And that's what really matters. Fortunately, the storm was already over. Without waiting for another response from Aldara, I grabbed some dry towels from my closet and handed one to her. Thanks. We both were completely soaked by the rain. You're welcome, Aldi. I wiped off my fur and tried to dry every part of my body. She did the same. After a while, I noticed that Aldara looked so tired. Aldi, your night shift just ended, hasn't it? Why don't you go home and rest? I asked her nicely. And leave you with him? Are you crazy? She replied, not so nicely. I appreciate your concern, Aldi, but I'm not a cub who needs a babysitter. I insisted. Aww. I know that, but we don't know how dangerous this guy might be. I really don't want to take the risk of him hurting you. She said with that motherly tone of hers. I smiled and blushed a little at her words. 
I don't think he can even move with that wound on his chest. Maybe it weirdly healed, but that doesn't mean he's fully able to do something to me. Aldara still wasn't looking so convinced. Trust me, please. I don't want to mess up your job tomorrow. After all, this was my idea. <sighs> she sighed, defeated by my words. <laughs> Fine, you win. But first thing in the morning, I'll be here. And if that horse has hurt you or even touched one single hair of your fur, I'm going to make fucking sure he really dies this time. Understood? I wished she was kidding, but that killer gaze of hers told me that she wasn't playing around. I nodded, a little scared. Don't touch him or get close to him, and if it's possible, tie up his arms and feet. I don't think that's proper to do. I answered a little nervously. Then she pulled out the sword on her back and gave it to me. Then take this. Use it if necessary. I awkwardly grabbed the sword. Uh. I don't know how to use this thing. I hesitated, feeling a little scared at the thought of having to use it. Just swing it until whoever wants to hurt you is dead. That's not a good tutorial, but if she's at ease knowing I have this thing, I'll take it. Well, I'm leaving. I followed her to the entrance of my home. When I opened the door, I noticed that not a single drop was falling from the sky anymore. The weather has been really weird lately. Be careful, I said with concern. I will be. I'll see you tomorrow. She gave me a big hug and left. I locked the door inside, extremely tired. <sighs> what a day. I put the sword close to the door. My clothes were still soaked, so I changed my outfit for a comfier one. I opened my wardrobe and took out some clothes. I looked at the horse, and I couldn't avoid thinking how he made my bed look so small. He was shivering. Crap, I forgot. He's wet, too. I changed clothes very fast, took some towels, too, and approached him. I started with his head and mane. It was long and soft. His mane was a dense black color with white tips at the end of his locks. It contrasted well with his fur color. I began to work on his face and equine snout. The horse had a little mark under his eye. It had an unusual shape. He looked so manly with that beard, his bold eyebrows, and strong neck. He's so handsome. I shook my head, ashamed of my thoughts, and kept drying off his neck. I took another dry towel and shivered with excitement at the thought of wiping down his body next. I've never touched a guy like this before. It's exciting knowing I can finally fulfill my fantasy by touching his sexy body. No, no, no. This is really wrong. I'm not doing this pervert stuff. Still, I needed to wipe his body to dry him off. Right? Slowly and with nervous excitement, I rubbed the towel all over his wide chest. His pecs were just as big as that lion guard's, maybe even wider. They looked like two big pillows. When pressing on them, I felt how meaty and strong his chest was. At this point, I really don't care that I'm purring. There's no one here to hear me anyway. At least, no one conscious. His chest had a big white spot extending from the middle out to the sides of his pecs. I wiped the towel carefully in that area, right where most of the scar was. I still don't get it. How did that heal so fast? I kept drying, this time going over his big arms and shoulders. Both arms were at least as muscular as those feline guards. I don't know if horses widen much more than other animals when they get muscles, but everything on him looks thicker. And hotter. He had some scars on his arms. Aldara has the same scars because she fights and trains every day. I think it's pretty obvious that this horse trains a lot too. On his left arm, he had markings similar to his eye, but with an even stranger pattern. It looked like a tattoo, but it's nearly impossible to do complex designs like that on fur. Maybe they're birthmarks? I tried to make sense of the white marks on his arm. My excitement grows when it's time to wipe his abdomen. 
I knew this looked so wrong, but I swear it was just to dry his fur so he wouldn't get sick. I looked at the horse's six-pack. God, he's really hot. With my face burning, I wiped the towel all over his abdomen. It's been so long since I purred this much in one day. The thin towel let me feel clearly enough to firm equine six-pack. Wow. He's so strong. He's even got those V-muscles. I felt my face flush when my mind started thinking things it shouldn't. I should be thinking about more important things like how to dry or better care for the horse, instead of stupid things. <laughs> I moved my paws past that area and started to dry his legs. Unsurprisingly, his legs were huge and thick too. The horse didn't need to flex them for me to feel how tough they were. Also, there they were again. Those weird marks, this time on his leg. The pattern was identical to the ones on his left arm. His bare feet made me wonder if he had lost his shoes on the way here. I... I think I'm done. I felt so guilty for basically having used the injured horse's body as a checklist for my fantasies. I inhaled deeply trying to shake off all the horniness in my body and cleared my throat so that I would stop purring. A pleasant smell filled my sensitive nose as I was taking deep breaths. It was the pure essence of the horse. <laughs> His essence. He smells so good. I would smelled other horses before, but his scent was different, almost hard to describe. I mean, he smells like a horse, but something in him feels so... Soothing? My heart eases and relaxes just by smelling him. <sighs> Why is everything about him so mysterious and weird? Relieved now that the horse was mostly dry, the reality of the situation started to sink in. I mean, how does this horse know my name? I've never seen him in my entire life. Why was he so happy to see me? Why was he asking for my help? While my mind was running wild with questions, I took some spare bed sheets from my wardrobe because I wasn't going to try to sleep in my bed with a huge guy on it. Well, I could just snuggle up on his chest and... No, Arthur, gay fantasies are over. Sadly over. I laid the sheets on the floor close to my bed. Save them? What did he mean by that? Why did he say I'm the only one who can save them? My head was dizzy from all of this mysterious mess. The moonlight coming from my window lit up my bed where the horse was resting. How can he look so vulnerable, even with such a fierce body? Maybe I'm still touched by his dying state from when we found him. Looking at him makes my heart feel uneasy. <sighs> Who are you? I whispered with my paw resting on my chest. Everything feels so weird so unreal. Maybe tomorrow he'll give me the answers that I'm looking for. I'll help you as much as I can. I promise. I'm not really sure why I said that, but I felt the need to do so. I think I should stop talking to myself. I looked at the horse one last time before I fell asleep. <sighs> Good night, mister. Horse... And that's it. With this hunky horse tucked away safely in his bed, Arthur will probably be running into more complications than comfort. But for now, we can just enjoy how handsome the big guy is, right? When I first saw this VN last October, it naturally reminded me a lot of Socially Awkward by Monchimine. Besides the expressive art style and getting to see our feline main character in the bottom left corner all the time, I was surprised by how good the comedic timing was, and it's paired with a fun, wholesome vibe, and kind of an intriguing story. Really an interesting blend that made me want to get more involved with the project. 
And full disclosure at this point, that involvement grew from a budding friendship with Blosey, the creator, into working on the VN in a more official capacity, as you saw in the credits. That was, as you saw, his voice during the whiteout scene in the cemetery, which I thought would be really cool since he's also the voice of Arthur. For these intros and outros, I'll still be handling them with the same spoiler-free treatment I give my other reads, but I do want to be completely transparent with you all that since about the beginning of the year, I've been a part of the unveiling team. As I mentioned at the beginning, this one was sitting nearly complete for more than a few months. On top of being busy with other voice acting projects, I wasn't exactly sure about the best or most sensible way to handle my readings for unveiling while actively contributing to it. After some discussion with Blosey, we decided that it would be alright to go ahead with it, and just like with anything else I post, I'll be keeping it to what anyone can access in public builds. So don't expect any insider info. The next video I've got queued up after this one is the last part of Chapter 13 of Remember the Flowers. And then after that, I've got a lot of catching up to do on a lot of different VNs. I'll of course announce updates on Twitter as new videos go up, but if you want to see some of the behind the scenes, get first wind of other projects I'm cooking up, and catch the occasional live read, come hang out with us on the Ice Fang and Chill Discord server. I won't quite be able to start putting videos up as often as I was previously for at least another couple of months here, as things start to pick up for me over the next few weeks with other life stuff I'll have to attend to. But wherever I find time in between, I'll be recording and posting what I can, and I appreciate everyone's patience with it as always. Take care of yourselves out there, and I'll see you all next time.